Okay, it is October 1st. Um, feels great outside. I love the cool weather. It's fall. Um, but God has put it on my heart to make um, a video blog. A couple weeks ago, he started to speak to me to make a video and to speak about joy. It was kind of like an overall feeling. I need to talk about joy. And so I was, I was pondering what he was having me say about it. And he brought me through a couple of unexpected circumstances that were painful, that were hard, that kind of came out of nowhere and um, really kind of rocked the boat of my life a little bit. Um, things are great. I'm so blessed. God has been, I'm in a real season of reaping right now and I'm so thankful for that. Um, this is the seventh year for me, uh, a year of completion of coming out of some of the hardest years of my life and some of the most painful, gut-wrenching experiences that just lasted on and on and on. And um, during that time, you know, if something is bad that's going on and you know, this is gonna be over in a week, you know, this won't last that long, you know, a temporary setback or a temporary disappointment or something like that, it's kind of easy to bounce back from that just within your own strength. But when something is going on and it's going on for a long period of time and it's difficult and there's a lot of pressure and there's pain and there's, a, you know, you're having a hard time understanding why God's allowing this situation to continue on and on. It's easy to get discouraged and it's easy to complain and sometimes it can cause you to start really questioning the goodness of God. And I know some people say they've never experience being mad at God. I, I can't say I'm one of those people because I have had times where I've, you know, shaken my fist at God like, how could you let this happen to me? I've served you and I'm obeying you. And so I have had, um, you know, moments of anger, moments of doubting the goodness of God. Um, but I pressed through that and I talked to God and he, he knows where we're coming from. He knows our heart and he ministers grace and forgiveness and mercy in those times. Um, well, basically, God was telling me this morning, there are two people that are going to be listening to this. There's going to be, well, actually, possibly three. There's going to be um, people that are in the wilderness season. And this is a season where you have the promises of God. You've, you're walking with the Lord. You've come out of bondage. You, you know that the Lord is good. You've been saved. Um, and you're, you're in that period where the Israelites were wandering around in the desert after God had brought them out of slavery in Egypt. And um, God is just wanting you to know that he is providing for you, the manna from heaven. And sometimes it might be bland and you're getting a lot of the same thing, but he is giving you what you need for the season to nourish you and to grow you. And he's training you and he's... He's preparing you because all the promises, anything that he's put in your heart, any promises in the Bible, the, uh, living a life of righteousness, peace, and joy, and, and, and um, prosperity of mind, body, spirit, of, of um, you know, having your needs met, just prospering and, and feeling full and overflowing and all these things, you don't necessarily have that to the fullest measure while you're in the season of the wilderness and a lot of Christians never kind of leave this season and if you look um, and you study it in the word there's a couple of reasons why and one of them is they complained a lot and so it's really important in being able to access the joy of the Lord in hard circumstances that you are careful to not complain, not complain in your heart, not complain in your attitude. And part of the reason or part of the way that you're able to do that is you have to trust in the goodness of God, that God is not trying to hurt you. <laughs> He's trying to prepare you for the wonderful things that he has for you. And you might think that you're ready to receive those things, but God knows when we're ready. And when we are ready, they will come to us and they will just drop into your lap and it won't have to be just, um, you know, you don't have to beg God for what you need. He knows what you need. You ask him and you have faith and believe that he will give you what you need. Um, and you need to relinquish the, the opinion that you know what's best for you all the time. 
<laughs> because we don't always know what's best for us, but the Lord does. And so, um, it's really important if you're going through some hard times to keep your trust in God and trust in his goodness. And you don't have to thank him for the bad things that are going on, but you can, um, thank him that he's with you in those and that he's working all those things for your good. The word says that, um, God works all things, all things for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. And, and God loves us <laughs> and we love him. And we know we have a call on our lives because he's called us out of darkness into light. And in this um, season in the earth, he's raising up an army of people to do wonderful things. And I know he's put dreams and visions in your heart um, for your life, for your personal relationships, for your ministry, for your job. Okay. Um, I was talking about, um, you know, being careful not to complain when you're in the wilderness. Um, one of the other things to keep in mind if you're trying to access the joy of the Lord in hard circumstances, um, aside from not complaining, which is huge because complaining kind of blocks that joy from flowing out of you, um, is to watch for, for, for dread. Because when you've had bad things happen over and over and um, they continue to happen or you stay in a bad circumstance for a long period of time, it's easy to kind of get this reflex reaction in your emotions, like what's going to happen next, you know, and not have an expectation for God's goodness to shine through in, in, in powerful ways. And so just be on the lookout for areas that you might have dread, even if it's dreading going to work that day. When you dread, you kind of set yourself up for not making a good day. Um, and you have the ability to make a good day. You don't have to have a good day. You can create a good day by your faith. You know, God, we're created in the image of God. And we have the power to call those things that aren't as though they are. And so when you wake up with an attitude of expectancy that good things are going to happen today and... Um, then And also, when you're walking in the knowledge of the goodness of God and you're trusting in the goodness of God, you know that when these things come, if God is good and he's working all things for my good, then what good can come out of this, even if it's a bad situation or even if it's a hurtful situation or a hard circumstance? What can I gain from this? And really, God's making us into the image of his son. So that's part of our purpose here on the earth is to become like him. And he is creating us a clean heart, renewing a steadfast spirit within us. And through these situations and circumstances, we might not be able to change the situation. We might not be able to change the circumstance, but we can change our reaction to it. And this knowledge almost has that joy start bubbling up in you when you realize God's not against me. God is for me. God's preparing me for something good. Something good is going to happen today. You know, my, my dreams are going to come true. God didn't just put them in, in me just to torture me that things aren't the way that I would like for them to be or that I would hope for them to be. Um, going back to the Israelites in Numbers um, 23, um, it talks about how most, all, all but uh, two um Caleb, um, Caleb and Joshua were the only two out of that original group that left Israel that got to go into the promised land. And it was because, um, I think it's in Numbers, uh, 23, 13, um, I think that, uh, it said because they didn't follow God wholeheartedly. They worshiped idols, um, and really a huge part of coming out of the wilderness is to serve God with your whole heart. You know, just because you've become a Christian doesn't mean you are actually a disciple of Jesus Christ, that you're being discipled and you are following him because, you know, many people came to Jesus and weren't disciples. They turned back, you know, when he said, you have to eat my flesh and drink my blood. Some people said, this is, this is some weird teaching, you know, <laughs> like, I, and it said they turned back from there and they quit following him. And so Christ is going to ask you to step away from certain relationships or 
to change what you do for entertainment. As he starts to deal with you, you got to be willing to let go of whatever he asks you to let go of. You have to be able to uh, to obey whatever he asks you to do. And kind of when you're being dealt with about something and you refuse to obey him, you kind of get stuck. You get stuck in this holding pattern. Um, addictions, things that you're running to when you're hurting, you know, whether it's food, uh, cigarettes, alcohol, those things don't take your salvation, but you're not going to really be ready to enter the promised land while you're still having um, this idolatry in your life because really addiction is just another, it's, it's, a, it's another word for idolatry. And I mean, I understand how hard it is. I've, I've, I've been delivered from all kinds of addictions, all kinds of addictions. So I'm not making light of the struggle, but um, it is a struggle that you need to have and you need to surrender and allow God to heal you and do whatever you need to do and go to whatever classes, whatever support groups, whatever you need to assist you. But you got to make up your mind that I am going forward with the Lord and I will give up whatever I have to give up and I will do whatever I have to do. Um, I'm kind of getting off the subject of joy, but really that's so imperative because it's really hard to have that joy flowing through you when you're constantly running to something other than God to get your strength. Um, it's worshiping, you know, it's worshiping idols, really. Um, well, the second group of people that might be listening to this are people that are actually entering the promised land. You've been through a lot of testing. You trust the Lord. You believe God has good things for you. You see them. They're right there in front of you. You maybe have already laid hold of many of the promises of God and you're walking in it for days, weeks at a time. And, um, and, and, and some people that are actually in that spot where they're entering the promised land and they're battling to take possession of the land that God's given them, they might sometimes feel like they're still in the wilderness. I know sometimes when something hits, like what hit me in the last couple of weeks, I was like, oh, you know... Uh, and God had been speaking to me about joy, and I'm like, I've been in this place for so... And God was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> You've entered the promised land. These are the battles. You, you need to only listen and hear the battle plan that I have for you because it's very specific. And in the wilderness, you can learn how to obey God. That's kind of where you're learning how to obey God because when you enter the promised land... You got to be able to have the trust that God knows what he's doing because he's going to give you battle plans that aren't going to make sense, <laughs> you know, like march around this wall and yell at it and what? Um, and so when you're in the wilderness, you're learning to hear the voice of God. You're growing in trust. You're growing in faith. You're growing in knowing who you are in Christ and and just go through that time and, and, and trust that it's only a season if you will let go of the things that you need to let go of and you will when you're convicted that you'll repent that you'll turn that you'll you know chase God you have to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you as well that's the word of God God is not a man that he would lie he said seek first his kingdom and his righteousness um, and then everything, all the thing, all these things, that includes all things, all these things will be added to you as well. All the things that you think that you need, um, and the things that you don't actually need as you're, you're getting closer and deeper into the heart of God, you won't even want those things anymore. And you'll only want what God wants for you. And you'll only desire what God desires for you. And that's when you've kind of reached a place where your heart's so united with God that you can speak and call forth and those things will just they'll, they'll just fall into your lap <laughs> as you're ready for them um, and ladies don't don't let anybody tell you that God cannot send a husband to your doorstep you just follow God because actually he did my, <laughs> he sent me a husband to my doorstep so I might tell that story sometime um, so back to joy. Uh, the joy of the Lord is our strength. I just pray for everybody who's hearing my voice. 
that you will spend time in the presence of God, get in the word. The more that you time you spend with something, thinking about something, pondering on something, the more of a desire you will have for that thing. That's why you have to be very careful what you're holding on to and what you're believing God for, that it is what he has for you. You need to, to go to the Lord with an honestly open heart. Is this what you have for me? Is this what you want for me? And be open for him to tell you, no, let it, you know, let it go. And sometimes he'll say, give it, give it up, give it to me. And he might give it back to you, but he, he might know that you're holding on to that too tight and you're, your happiness, oh, sorry about the phone, <laughs> the office. Um, um, I just, I just pray that you will seek God with all of your heart for his purposes and his vision for your life. And, um, I, I lost my train of thought from before, but, um, I just feel that there is an anointing of joy that is flowing out of me right now that everybody who is hearing this would just raise their hands and receive the joy of the Lord, which is their strength, knowing that God loves us, that no matter whether you're in the desert season, and, and, and please don't think I'm trying to bring condemnation. If you're struggling with an addiction, you've been struggling with it for a long time because there were addictions that God delivered me from like that and then there were addictions that I struggled in for a time but if you have to repent 10 times a day for something you keep repenting don't accept it do not accept that thing into your life you you war against it until you have the victory you do have the victory until you realize you have the victory and and it's and it's being lived out in your life I just pray that each and every person hearing my voice that they would be delivered from anything that's binding them i just say the spirit of nicotine the spirit of masturbation the spirit of lust has to loose itself from god's people right now in the name of jesus and leave codependent spirits have to go in the name of jesus we are not addicted to people we are not addicted to people in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we are set free from people pleasing. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, spirits of rejection have to go. We are accepted, we are made accepted in the beloved. We are beautiful inside and out. The beauty of God is flowing to us and through us. We don't have to go to men to hear that we're beautiful. We can offer our beauty that the Lord has placed in us to other people. Um, I just pray for those people that are entering into the promised land, that they recognize that, that they trust in their ability to hear the voice of the Lord for battle plans to take possession of what the Lord has promised you. Listen to them. Trust them. It doesn't matter how weird it is. You don't have to get somebody else to agree with you. might actually be a bad idea to talk to some people about what God is asking you to do. Just look in the Word. You know, make sure that it's not sin because God is not going to ask you to go after somebody else's husband. Um, he's just not. You know, if it goes against the word, that's not the voice of the Lord. And you really have to be, have relinquished um, your opinion as to what God's will is so that you can really receive what he has for you. I want that so bad. I want that so bad for each and every one of you to have the fullness of joy that Christ died for us to have. And the circumstances that I went through the last couple of weeks, they, I didn't handle them perfectly. Some of the prophetic words I have posted this week were exact things that God was speaking to my heart. It's so cool to see that other people are like, oh, you're, you're, you know, this is exactly what I needed to hear. And I'm like, wow, there's lots of people that are needing to hear the same thing I need to hear. Because God's speaking that to my heart. Many of the things that I post, God has been speaking them to my heart. Um, some of them are you know, God speaking through me just for a public word, but um, a lot of it, I'm going through the same experiences and God speaking the same thing. He loves us. He's got good plans for us. I just pray right now in the name of Jesus that you would receive the fullness of joy, the power of God to go through life with your head held high, <laughs> with your shoulders back, knowing no matter what season you're in, it's not going to last if you keep pressing forward. Keep pressing forward. Keep going in. If you got a battle to fight, fight it. 
don't don't stick your head in the sand. It's going to be there. It's going to get harder. Just fight, you know, fight the good fight of faith. Spend time in the Word. Spend time listening to sermons and, and, and growing. I know what it was I was saying before the phone rang, I think. I um, was talking about whatever your mind is towards, whatever you're longing for, that is going to increase. So you have to be really careful that you're not just longing for a specific outcome. Because what if that's not God's best for you? And you're wasting, you're longing for that, and it's the desire is growing bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And um, not saying about the promises of God, because you do want that to happen. You believe for those things. Let that desire grow. He's going to fulfill it, but how he's going to do it, who he's going to do it through, the method for which he's going to do it, um, we don't always know that. We know in part. We prophesy in part. Even if you have a prophecy, we prophesy in part. And so leave room for God to do things a little different than you might have expected, because some of you might be waiting on something that God's waiting on you to re to relinquish the outcome of how that's going to be fulfilled, the desire of your heart. Y'all have a great day.